Hello and welcome on Watches TV. Welcome to Geneva for this crazy Geneva Watch Week because not everything is going to happen by the airport at the Watches and Wonder. There are many things scattered around the city. Unfortunately, weather kind of is not on the well, you see what I mean. We've enjoyed beautiful uh, last two weeks uh, sunshine every single day, but that's the way it is. But we're going to spend quite a lot of time inside, so actually it doesn't really matter. We're starting off our coverage, which will be quite extensive, with the interview of Mr. Beaver and his son, who will come back, who will explain to us a little bit more what is their project behind their brand. Let's join them now. Today we have the pleasure of having both Mr. Beaver Sr. and Jr. with us because a few uh, weeks ago we heard about the new project and we want to know all about it. So please tell us a bit more. What's Pierre, will you start or shall I start? You start. Priority to the elders. <laughs> if I start, I never stop. <laughs> <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> So what was the question? Well, we heard of a, some uh, kind of project coming along about a brand. It's an old project, yeah. I must say. It has been already three years that I was hesitating to launch my brand or not. As you know, I left uh, my function at LVMH in November uh, 2018. So it's nearly four years now. And I realized that it's easy to quit a function. It's not so difficult to quit some responsibilities, but it's nearly impossible to leave a passion. And you cannot <laughs> retire from a passion. You can retire from everything, from responsibilities, job, whatever. You know, even if you are president of, of, a, of a country, you can uh, uh, leave but you cannot put your passion into um, on the side on the side and then i decided time has maybe come to bring my son and to ask him to help me uh, to make our own brand and not only helping me now but taking over later because as I am 73 years old, I know that I will still live with comfort and good health, maybe 20 years, but not more. <laughs> 20 and I'm 73 means hey, I will be 93. Um, and therefore it's time for me to not only start my own brand at this old age, uh, but to start my brand with Pierre in the background and Pierre will be the person uh, in the front later. And so that has given me great motivation. And I have decided with Pierre that we would start again. And now that we have started again, I am dreaming about holidays, <laughs> 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 about skiing, about uh, the sea, going uh, to Saint-Tropez. You uh, must be very happy to hear this, <laughs> no? <laughs> Ho hopefully, hopefully I can get a lot of holidays too. <laughs> this looks, might want to join the company, it looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, that's the story. But uh, the idea of doing your own brand is something that had crossed your mind prior long, in your... Long, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so it was, it, it yes. was kind of a, not an ultimate goal, but it was something that was already existing a little yes, bit. Yes, yeah. you know, uh, I started as an independent, more or less, when I bought uh, Blancpain. Mm -hmm. And I bought Blancpain for 21,000 uh, Swiss francs, which, we, and which means there was nothing there. <laughs> you cannot pay 21,000 Swiss francs if there is a factory. Uh, yeah. If there are machines, there was nothing. We just bought the right to own the name. So we bought the rights of the name. The name Blomba has been protected by, by, by us, by me. Uh, in I don't remember. I think it was September, October to, um, 19, um, 1982. And we started to produce the first watches uh, in June. 1983. 
So I was, we were independent. We were not only independent, but we were very weak. We, was, we were not existing, even if the age of, of Blanpa. But uh, you had the support of uh, strong partners also. So right? we had a partner called Piguet. And Piguet uh, was a very strong uh, movement maker in those days. Extremely strong even. And, uh, and uh, together with Rack Piguet, uh, we decided to develop uh, Blanpa. But when you start developing from zero, even if you can have movements from Piguet, you are like an independent. We were, by the way, independent. And, uh, uh, and therefore, today, I feel that I'm back 40 years <laughs> before. Because it is exactly 40 years that we started uh, Blanpa. So I feel myself again, in the shoes of, of 1982. And at my age, to feel suddenly back to 1982 is great. <laughs> of course. And I enjoy the yeah. trip. So what, is the, 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 what are the kind of the core values or the, the ethos of the, the brand that you're establishing now? It's everything that I couldn't do before, which means it's the extreme quality. Quality above everything. The quality is the most important element that we have to master. Um, you know, uh, quality, that is close to eternity. And Mr. Gucci, he said, uh, long after the price is forgotten, quality is still there and remains, which is very, very true. So quality is our first concern. We want to master the invisible, mastering what people cannot see. That means, for me, that's luxury. I could never do it because we always had constraints of uh, prices and, uh, and uh, market analyzers. And we said, but if the customer cannot see, he would never buy. Why would the customer pay for something he cannot see? In fact, it's the soul, and the soul is constantly invisible. And uh, there is no problem to paying for the soul. <laughs> now, that is the most important element in our uh, brand. It's the mastering of the invisible. For instance, all the screws must be black polished. And if you have 75 screws in a movement, we need 75 times 35 minutes to polish, black polish the screws, etc. So there are many elements that the customer, the watchmaker will see when he's uh, in the service department, he will see the problem. But uh, even if customer cannot see, that's what we want to do. And you, Pierre, of course, I mean, you've been surrounded by watches uh, since you were a kid, but you've also uh, worked recently in uh, more in the vintage world of uh, watches. What do you bring into this project with uh, your uh, perspective? I think, first of all, um, put aside that experience in the world of vintage watches and the uh, in auction houses. Uh, I think there's a real complementarity in, in the sense that my father brings a lot of experience, a lot of baggage, a lot of knowledge on the industry, and I might bring something a bit more youthful, a bit, a bit more, a bit more flair, a bit more excitement, optimism. So then there's already a strong complementarity in 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 that sense. And then coming from a um, part of the industry where he's never really worked, he's more been an actor as a collector rather than as you know, watch expert or uh, selling what vintage watches. Uh, I think I can bring an interesting perspective on what are the needs, wants of collectors of today, how the market, how to, how to maintain value on the secondary market, how to develop all that aspect of a brand which today is becoming really important, especially for independent brands. Mm -hmm. I understand the, the philosophy, but then when you transform that into design, um, which way are you going to go to? Uh, we called it uh, cl uh, contemporary classic. Yeah, or neoclassic. Classic uh, is, is, is for sure, it will be classic, but with a touch of modernity. In other words, uh, in art, you call that neoclassic. Um, <clears throat> it will not be totally disruptive. You could also have a disruption. The, the disruption, we did a lot uh, when I was at Hublot. So we are not going to repeat uh, and, 
And for me, disruption is, belongs to what we did before. Now it is more sophisticated. It is modernity, uh, but classic. And it means we're going to take all the materials, all the technology of today and even tomorrow and study how can we introduce it in our classic without uh, 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 without, uh, without compromising, compromising uh, uh, exactly, without compromising. So it's a, it's a very fine way to find what can we done, how can we use, can we, is that enough, is that too much? And that is what we are going to work. And uh, very concretely, at what stage of the project are you now? And what are the next steps? I think we're, we're very early in the project still. We're still kind of building up uh, what is the project is going to be like. We have a clear um, plan in mind. And now it's just about making it happen, um, meeting you know, all the partners we need to create, to create our brand, to create our environment, uh, recruiting some staff. And you know, just building up all all this structure, which is gonna just take life, uh, hopefully in the next year. And uh, physically speaking, I mean, there are places in Switzerland that are marked with this kind of uh, watchmaking that you are uh, going after. Uh, so, do you know already where you're gonna establish yourself? Uh, between um, yes, we have a few options. We might choose the option close to Nyon. Uh, it's called, the village is called Givra. And we have a hospital there, very famous. Um, Genolier. Genolier. Genolier, yeah. So it's, it's next to Genolier, more or less. Okay, with a kind of a nice view. The right? wonderful view <laughs> on the lake. You have really the impression you are... It's a postcard, yeah. And, and, and there we have, we, we have found an old farmhouse of 800 square meters where we could uh, move and have our atelier and our office. Which is uh, quite a good place because it's between Geneva, you have access to La Vallée de Joux quite Fine. easily, yeah, uh, Lausanne, so generally speaking to, to bring people in, bring new talents, but also, you know, watchmakers from La Vallée de Joux, it's, it's, it's very convenient. And uh, kind of my final question, uh, I mean, obviously we're talking small quantities. Do you have already set yourself kind of uh, objectives? Yes, or? yes, we have. The objective is first year to produce 50 watches. 50? Five zero. Okay, yes. well, that's, that's already not that bad. I mean, that considering the level of quality that you're looking after. Yeah. Number one, yeah. and considering the difficulty to produce a minute repeater um, with a tourbillon, uh, with a um, uh, 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 mini micro rotor, um, it's not so easy. And three hammers. Okay, so that's what you want to start with. Hammers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is the okay, first. Yeah. That's right. the first Carry product. On. Of course. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> and, and, and we, we project uh, the, the first watch to be delivered to a customer by mid February next year, which is in less than one year. Yeah, that's. Because we are already, Quite ambitious, yeah. yeah, it's it, and and we we hope to be able to deliver thirty pieces next year. And to what extent will the collectors have their say into the maybe some design characteristics of their watches? Are you going to like impose your style for, uh, to start up with, or are you going to take in or immediately the, the the these inputs? We we will have our own style first, and then. As the customer is king, we are used to say, and if he is king, he will have the possibility to choose a variation from the standard. So we will be open to special requests of the customer. Uh, but we will have, of course, both. We will have our own uh, taste, uh, which we will suggest. And then if the customer really wants it different or wants it to be done in platinum rather than in steel, we can always study this and we will be open to special customers' uh, desires. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, if I understand well, it will be like only one model to start up with, yes. not coming with a collection or... Anything. No. No, no, it's... Um, okay. 
Yeah. We'll have one model, but maybe he will, the, this model will be presented in three materials or four materials and with uh, maybe five different uh, dials, which gives finally a, a, a large vibration, but it's always the same case and always the same movement. Mm -hmm. I understand. And uh, sorry. Uh, so for you, I mean, it's a new and I guess quite exciting challenge. How, how do you how do you live this? How do you experience this? Super excited, uh, super happy. You know, every day you work, you, you're happy to wake up in the morning, work with your father. It's a real privilege, especially having a father like mine with so much experience, so much knowledge. Um, it's uh, it's not always easy. You have to live up to the to the expectations and the standards, but it's uh, it's a great learning curve and you know I couldn't be happier than 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 being here. He's my he's my mentor, he's my teacher in addition to being my father and um dynamic is really really nice. He's always listening, super um he always wants to be to understand when when I tell him about my opinions or what I think and yeah, it's super super interesting. But it's nerve nerve-wracking too. He's not always easy. And obviously, you know, there's a bit of pressure, but that's part of the game, and that's what what we what we like as well. So now the the brand is known as uh, GC Biver, and maybe one day Biver and Son. Then, oh Pierre Biver, yeah, <laughs> oh, Pierre. Be, uh, Biver and Son. No, I think I think we, I think the 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 JC will never never leave. I mean, it's a uh, in in it's the the fact we can create this brand today is because of his career, because of what he's accomplished, the the great man, the great businessman and the great man of watchmaking that he is. So I think in all respects to what he's done, it will stay forever like that, even if hopefully in five or six generations, if the brand is still within the family, I, I, I sincerely hope the, the JC will never have left because it all started because because of him. Well, that's very nice and respectful. Thank you, Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time and I wish you the best of luck. I can't, uh, thank you. I'm really looking forward to following this a little bit uh, on the side. And uh, because, I mean, if we're talking February next year, that's... That's yeah. only 11 months. That is now. nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. It's, <laughs> it's less really than a nothing. Year. It's less than <laughs> yeah. a year. Yeah. Well, again, best of luck. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank you very and much. See thank you, you for the time. interview. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.